I just robbed an ambassador for Christ, and as you know, where I go to Kingdom Guys, remember eat the fish and spit out the bones for some things you may agree with and some things you may not. It's gonna be deep, it's gonna be powerful, it's gonna be crazy, it's gonna be madness. But listen, right? Hell's real, you know. Hell is real. I'm gonna share something with you. This is quite deep. This is deep. This is deep. Deep. Now, my son is nine. My son is nine. And the other day, he said, Dad, last night, I couldn't go to sleep. And as I was laying on the bed, I was praying, I was speaking in tongues. Because my son speaks in tongues. And he said, Dad, as I was speaking in tongues, I saw a coffin and a dead man in white in the coffin. And then he said, then the man that was in the coffin fell free. The man in the coffin went like this. Huh. He went, he went like that. He went down. I went, huh? He goes, the man in the coffin, he went through the coffin into the ground. And he said that he was inside fire burning. And I said, wow, that's, that's deep, son. He goes, he was, he goes, dad, he was in the fire burning. I said, how big was the fire? He said, he was as, as big as him and it was, he was burning. And he said to me, when he was in the fire burning, he said that he was on his knees repenting and praying. And he was saying, Lord, forgive me, Lord, forgive me. And he was repenting of his sin. And I said, I said, what happened after that, son? He said, nothing happened. I said, did Jesus come and help him? He said, no. I said, what happened? Did, you know, when he finished praying, he goes, nothing happened. He was just praying in the fire and he was burning and nothing, was, and nothing happened. And that, that's when his vision stopped. And I thought to myself, my son's nine, right? My, remember, my son is nine. Now that's what, he was re repenting in the fire. A nine-year-old is not gonna say that. A nine-year-old is not going to say that, but he said that. And I've had many visions of hell. I've seen hell, been to hell many a times, many a, many a times. That repenting part is quite powerful because I remember in hell, there's different, there's different entrances, there's two different entrances into hell. One's a gate. One's a portal, one's a portal that's in the sky. I'm talking about hell, might be a bit of a long video, but it's very, very interesting stuff. One's a portal, it's a, it, it, it's a, world, it's a, it's a, a vortex in the sky. In hell, yeah, it's a vortex. In, in hell, you look up, there was a vortex. When I looked, there was a vortex spinning round. And people that died was coming through this vortex. And they were landing in different parts of hell. All right, this is where it gets, it's quite deep. That's the vortex entrance. There's a gate entrance where there's a big, massive, iron, steel, black gates that open. And you walk through those and people are on fire. I saw, when I, when I went through that gate, let me talk about the gate of hell. I went through the gate of hell, for the gates of hell shall not prevail against the, the, the church of living God. I went through the gates of hell in one of my visions that I had, many, many visions I've had of hell. I went through the gates of hell. And as it opened, I went through. And on the right, I saw, I saw well, all around me, I saw people standing on fire and they were all praying. They were all on fire. And they wasn't on fire with the Holy Ghost either. They was on fire of the flames of hell. Some woman was on fire and she was going, forgive me, Lord, please forgive me. I repent. I forgive me. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me. Please forgive me. And that's what she was saying. And you know what happened? Nothing. So when my son said that, I said, yeah, I've seen that. I've seen that. My son hasn't seen those videos of me um, having visions of hell. He hasn't watched those. He doesn't even know where they are. He doesn't... <laughs> not something he's searching for, he's nine. So, I know what he said was, was real because I've, I've seen that stuff already. That's through the gates of hell. But you know what, in hell, it's like overcast. It's a dark place. You can see, you know when it's really, really dark, like twilighty. That's what it's like, twilight. It's not pitch black, it's just twilight. You can, see, you can just about barely see. But there's light coming from lava and from fire. I saw like, when I, went, when I was in hell before, I saw like um, a cavern. Not like a cavern, like Grand Canyon. Know the Grand Canyon? Yeah, it's like that. The sides go up like that, and then obviously there's a plateau a bit like that, yeah? In this middle bit here, there was lava, and it's flowing, lava and fire flowing, and there was people inside the lava burning. And it was all burning on fire, screaming, crazy. But then, like I said, there's a, there, there, it's like a Grand Canyon. Okay, these are the sides of the Grand Canyon, if I can say. It's in hell, like the Grand Canyon. It's a plateau bit like that. 
in the walls, they're carved out. So there's lava in the middle, and in these walls, these walls are carved out. And they're carved out like that, in the rock face, and there's bars. And there's people in there. And the remorse is bad, the remorse. You know, oh, I wish I listened, why did I listen? I should have listened. There was people in these carved out cells in the side of the, 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 the mountain side. There was lava down the middle. And they're carved in there, they're all in here. And the remorse was bad. Deep remorse and sorrow. Woo! No way out. There was no doors. It's a cell. There's no doors. Oh, when you look through the cell, the cell bars, it's just a lava and people in the, in the lava screaming. Ah, ah, screaming in the lava. It's deepness. Now, on top of, on the other side, there's a plateau. Obviously, the sides are like that. Lava in the middle. The sides of the walls going up, or the sides of the mountain going straight like that. Okay. People here carved, carved out cells within the rock, rock face with bars, people inside there. Then obviously there's a plateau bit. When you get to the top, there's like a flat bit, yeah? On there, I saw people praying on their knees, on fire, praying. Lord, forgive me, Lord, forgive me, praying. Nothing was happening. And I was looking, I saw their prayers go up and it hit an invisible ceiling and came back down again. This is the reason why I know there's a dome in hell. But anyway, it's another conversation because of earth is underneath, hell is underneath the earth, a barrier. So anyway, I won't go into that. So these prayers were going up, hitting this invisible barrier and they weren't going no further. There was not ascending up into the heavens with like a sweet smelling savour unto the Lord like our prayers do on the earth realm. When we pray, our prayers go up to heaven. They're heard and received by the, by the almighty God. Woo! In hell, it's not heard. Your pre people's prayers down there is not heard. Do you know what, right? So as I was looking, I was on top of the pl plateau bit up here. As I was looking over, I saw like a big crater that was on fire. And people were inside the crater burning and I saw demons around the, the crater or devils or some mad dark figures, nasty. And people were trying to crawl out of this crater to get out of this fire, this lava that was in these craters, trying to get out. And these demons were pushing them back in like with, um, like with like sticks, if I could say. Pushing them back in to the lava. They, couldn't, they wouldn't let them out. Pushing back in. Please let me out. Pushing back in. And they were laughing. These demons were laughing at them as they were pushing them back in. Sadness. Now, you know what, right? I saw a cave. And in this cave, it was low. The cave, I went through this cave. And I looked down and there was like a, a little cutout on the floor. And it was like a little... A, a, a little gap about this wide, about this big. This is how big the gap was. On the floor, there's a big wall. At the bottom of the wall, there's a little gap like this, about six foot long and about this high. And I saw a man in there and there was earth underneath him. And I saw worms come out of the earth, eat the man's flesh off. Then the worms went back into the ground again. The man's flesh came back onto him again. It grew back onto him. The worms came back out and ate his flesh. It's like that guy, there's a, I forgot the guy's name, in the Greek, in the Greek mythology, there's some guy, he, he was chained, uh, the guy, who, is it Perseus? Someone who stole fire, Prometheus. He stole fire from the gods, I think it is. And Zeus chained him to a rock face and uh, every day an eagle or something would come and eat his liver. Then his liver would grow back. Then the bird would come back, eat his liver again, then his liver would grow back continuously. That's just Greek mythology I said there, all right? Anyway, it's the same thing. The guy's flesh came back on, the worms or worms and stuff ate off. Then it grew back and the worms ate off. And this guy was just laying down in this little gap, not moving, in pain. It ate off all his flesh because he saw skeleton and bone and then the flesh came back up again. Over and over and over and over and over. And I thought, wow, man, this is crazy. Crazy. Now, as I was standing there I, on that plateau bit as well, like I said, when I looked up, there was a, world, there was a vortex that spins in the sky, it's a dark vortex, and it spins, and people that die fly through the vortex, and then some land in the fire, some land in, 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 in um, these cells that are carved out of rock, some land in that place where the, where the worms are eating them, some people land inside that crater of fire, other people were landing further than where I could see, they were landing way out there in the distance, I couldn't see where they were landing, but wherever they were landing wasn't good, wasn't good at all. Madness. Now listen to this. I saw another dark room. Woo! I saw another dark room. It's in the cave. In this cave. In this cave where the people are carved in the rock face. There's like corridors down this cave. 
And in one of these corridors, in one of these rooms, all right, there was a dark room. And I saw a man tied onto like a, um, a, a dentist chair. This man's on a dentist chair, strapped down like this. And I saw, it was pitch black in there, but I could see. How could it be pitch black, but I can see? It's a spiritual thing, I guess. It's one of those mad dynamics that you can't explain in the physical realm. But I could see what was happening. So the whole room was dark. And what was happening is that um, they, there, was, there was demons that were surrounding this guy. And these, these demons were stabbing him. There was like five of them. They would stab him, all with a spear. Boom! Then they would move around a bit, stab him again, move around a bit, stab him again from all different directions. And this guy was screaming in a chair. And I perceived in my spirit that this guy's been there since the Second World War, 1938, 30, sorry, 1940, 1941. I could see him there. He, that's, where he, that's when he died. And he was in that chair, that, doc, that dentist chair. It's like a dentist chair. And he's strapped and he's getting stabbed by all these evil spirits with spears. That's quite frightening, right? Now listen to this, this is a journey, right? We're talking about a journey here, okay? Madness, madness, listen to me. Now, Stephen Hawking died the other day, right? Now, I didn't do a video about Stephen Hawking's when he's in hell because that's jumping on the bandwagon. I'm not jumping on no bandwagons. That's why I haven't spoken about this, what I'm speaking about now. If you're still here on the video, um, good, because now, now you can hear this part here. This is the, we got rid of all the people that's not interested. They've all gone now. Let's get into the interesting part. I saw Stephen Hawking when he died. You better believe it. Woo! I saw Stephen Hawking. Now listen to this. Listen to this. As I was at work, I saw, this is, Stephen Hawking died like two days earlier. As I was at work, I was driving a bus. I saw Stephen Hawking. I'm like, oh, this is deep. I'm driving the bus, you know, and I can see Stephen Hawking while I'm driving. While I'm at work, driving the bus, I can see Stephen Hawking. So what happened to him is that he died. You know, obviously, he's a science, the, the science guy, and, you know, he had that, 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 that debilitating um, uh, disease or whatever for all these... Because he, cause he, cause he, he taught so much evil and wickedness, that's why he had that disease. That's why he was crippled up. Evil spirit came in and, and crippled him up. It's a judgment. Woo, this is craziness. Anyway, when he died, I saw him dead. But then I saw him spirit. I saw his spirit come out of his body, and he had. He was wearing a suit, a suit from the 1950s, 1960s, a tweed suit, a nice, old-fashioned suit, sharp tie. And when he came out of his body, he he was he was standing. His spirit. He was standing normally, and he looked at his body, and he fell straight on his knees. He fell straight on his knees and started to pray, and he said, "Lord, forgive me. Please forgive me." And he. Started, what started to flood back to him was the prayers that his grandmother told him. He learned how to pray from his grandmother. He used to watch his grandmother pray and he learned that from his grandmother. But obviously he went the atheist route and taught wickedness. And when he died, he knew what was happening. That's why he dropped on his knees and started to pray. And you know what happened to him? Nothing. God, there was no bright light, no saviour helping him. Nothing. And you know what happened to him? I saw him in hell in this box, it was like a six by six box, a cube, right? And in this cube, there was a, there was like a projector playing in this cube. A projector was playing on the back wall. And what was being played was all his teachings, what he taught people in the science field for the past 50 years. The big bang, the understanding of the universe, God is not real. This, that and the other, quantum physics, teaching all this stuff that was atheistic in root and leading so many people astray, leading so many people to hell. He was seeing all his teachings that he's done and all the teachings that are going to be played after he's died, the future teachings. People are still listening to his doctrine that he taught over those years. And let me tell you something, the shame, the sorrow was, in, was too hard to bear. He was sorrowful, he was shamed. He felt so ashamed of what he'd done. He felt so sorrowful about what he taught. It was so thick, thick sorrow, thick remorse, knowing that he can't take it back. Understanding what he'd done was wicked because now he's in hell, he's understanding the spiritual realm and what everybody was saying, all the Christians and that, what they were saying was true. 
and he obviously found that too late and he can't take it back and he's in hell and he's watching these projectors, he's watching these, he's teaching on the big screen over and over and over and over again and it was, it, the remorse was very, very thick. And I thought to myself, you know what, right? Don't know what to say. It's a deep vision. It's visions of hell. What I saw when I was there. It's not good. It's not a nice place to be. It's not somewhere where you would wish your worst enemy to be. Now I understand why Christ came and died for us. That's why he, he endured the, the suffering and shame of the cross because he knew, he, he, said he made a way of escape. He had to come as a sinless lamb of God to pay for our sins because he knew that place, that's, that's, that's hell. And I'm talking about that's a place of torment. I'm not talking about the lake of fire. The lake of fire is a different thing altogether. A lake of, the lake of fire is, 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 is being separated from the presence of God for eternity. Separated from the presence of God for eternity. That is crazy torment for eternity. Lord, in the name of Jesus. So what am I trying to say now? Hell is a crazy place. Hell is not a place that I'd wish my worst enemy to be. And it's, it's a place of burning. What is it like there? It's like a place of sorrow. A place of, 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 of torment. Screaming. There's a lot of screaming there, you know. Lots of screaming. Ah, screaming, shouting, crying. And everybody is suffering individually. It's not a collective suffering. Everybody is suffering individually because they knew they rejected the Lord. They could have the Lord at any time, but they rejected him. And now it's too late. Now it's too late. Oh my word. I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to leave it there. How do I see hell? One, was, one, one time I was laying down my eye. Most of the time it's in prayer. But one time I, I had my eyes open. Listen, let me say about visions, dreams and visions. They normally happen. I could be talking to you right now and I can see a vision. I'm talking to you and I can see something very clearly over here. I can see something clearly in the spiritual realm as I'm speaking to you. I can have a vision in the spiritual realm as I'm speaking to you. I was speaking to a brother yesterday and I said, bro, stop talking. I can see it all clearly. I started to give him the prophecy. Boom, 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 boom. He said, brother, I'm delivered. And he was hyped. Why? Because he got a deliverance word. Because when I was speaking to him, I saw that I saw it all open before me. The Bible says that for all man is open before him. All man's heart is open before the Lord. We, he can see everything. It's open before him. That's what happens with revelation. When you have revelation and understanding, you're moving in the spirit, things start to, God starts to open up things for you. So you start, God starts to unpack and open things for you. And you start to see it clearly. Without, without your physical eyes, but with your spiritual eyes. It's right there. And I'm not talking about the third eye either. That's when demons come into your life. Anyway, let me stop there. It's Robert Ambassador for Christ. As you know, I go to Kingdom Girls. Remember, um, you catch me on Facebook or WhatsApp. Leave a comment down below. See you guys next video. Don't know why I talk about that video about hell, but it's interesting stuff. Talk to you guys a bit later. You don't have to worry. You, don't, you, you who are saved don't have to worry about hell. You're going to be with the Lord. And it's going to be heaven. <sighs> heaven is glorious, you know. I'm going to do a video about heaven. Right, see you guys a bit later.